Montalto Winery is on Victoria's beautiful Mornington Peninsula. The kitchen garden is spread over almost one and a half hectares and it's growing lush, fresh veggies for the vineyard's restaurants. The head gardener is Julie Bennett. What a gorgeous little garden this is. It must be it a is. pleasure to work here. It is, really. It's one of my great loves and it's a pretty good office. The kitchen gardens here was started about 20 years ago, just a few sort of small beds and it's just grown now to around three acres. That's a lot of vegetable garden. It's a lot of vegetable garden. So that services our three restaurants. Each kitchen will take a small section from what they want. They all have an input in what I grow. I love heirloom vegetables. These were grown first and foremost for flavour. They taste amazing. So I can offer these things to our chefs and to guests. One of the great things about old fashioned heirloom veggies, like the ones being grown here, is that you can save the seed from one season to use again the next. And that's just what Julie is doing. I just want to show you, Millie, one of my favourite things that I love to save the seeds from. This is called wasabi greens. It's also called wasabina, which loosely translate to wasabi-like. It's a mustard leaf, but it has that really lovely, clean sort of zing to it, like wasabi. You sort of feel that hit up the back the of your nose. comes in. That's delicious. So we pick a lot of this and we grow a lot of this. I've been saving the seeds from this for probably five years. And every year that I save the seed, the next lot of plants always germinate the fastest. They're the strongest plants because they've adapted to this soil. So it's such a good point, isn't it? When you find something that really works in your garden, it's really generous. I have a lot of luck with this too. Over the years, it is actually becoming a stronger plant for you because it knows the garden, it knows the conditions. It's great to grow lots of seed, but it's also important to store it well. So I'm keen to find out what tips Julie has for making sure that the seed she's saving stays fresh and viable for as long as possible. One of the most important things too is about how to store your seeds, which is something that people get wrong. One of the best ways is probably in glass. So save all your old jars. Don't have them in direct light or direct heat. Uh, they will sweat in the jars. And also too, I usually put in a little handful of rice which acts as a bit of a... Soaker upper like a silica. Like a, like yeah, silica. like a soaker yeah. upper. So that'll also take away a little bit of that moisture and keep them nice and fresh. So cool, dry, out of the light. Definitely. Julie has always saved seed for next season's crops, but when COVID hit, Julie decided to take this a step further. Everyone was panic buying. And I looked around and thought, I have so much beautiful saved seed of all these amazing varieties. So. I started to think about how I was going to get the seeds out. I hired a post office box. I put out a post on websites and social media saying, I have an idea. I'd love to share heirloom seeds with people. All you need to do is send me a stamped self-addressed envelope. I'll send out seasonal specific seeds so people can grow them straight away. They don't have to put them in a drawer and wait for the right season. Some information about that seed and how to save that seed to then grow it on and to share. So the name Seeds Are Free, pass it on, meaning nature's so generous in what it gives us. They should be free so that others can have animals. What started as sharing the spare seed from her work here soon grew to include her own home garden in nearby Crib Point. What are you growing here? So I do a lot of my seed saving here as well. If I need to isolate something or test how something's growing, I'll grow it here. So this is more our backyard production. When I'm sharing seeds, this is what I'm wanting people to be able to do, to grow in their own backyard and then be able to share them on. Most of the time when we eat a plant, we're eating it as a juvenile stage. So to let things go almost through their full cycle, so letting them flower and then letting them then go to seed. You know, we eat zucchinis when they're quite young, but that's quite juvenile. But to save the seed, you want to let it go through its whole life cycle where it's quite large. And even something like celery, I mean, we eat these leafy stems before they set any flowers, but now that's about to do its thing and also produce some seed. That's right. So this is probably too tough to eat now. So we stopped cutting and we're letting them go to flower. When you're saying you're going to let these go now, how much seed would you get off that little handful of plants? You can get way more than you and I could ever eat. So thousands, this mate. is thousands. And this is one of the great things about nature being so generous 
is that we can get so much seed that we will never be able to use. So this is why I want to be able to share things. And this is why we should be sharing heirloom seeds. And I see you've got a lot of things hanging to dry. Is that a simple way you do it? Yeah, so once they've gone to seed and they're dried, so normally in the afternoon when you know all the frost has gone off them, I'll hang them upside down somewhere dark and dry and cool and then can save those seeds. What began for Julie as a lockdown project to share a few seeds has grown into something huge. Talk about a successful little project. This is just some of the correspondence you've had. So this is one of the beautiful things about giving something for nothing in return. This has given back to me so much. Everyone that sent me a letter I've kept, and these are really special to me. In a time when, you know, the, the art of writing a letter is really dying, it's lovely to get these letters from all ages, from young children that are wanting to grow something in their backyard, to older people who'd thought they'd lost that art of maybe growing something in their backyard. It's just been beautiful. Julie's lockdown seed sharing project has taken on a life of its own, and she's hoping that other people will take on the idea. Will you send seeds to anyone? Not really anyone. I've sort of said seeds are free for just Victoria. Uh, I do want to be careful where I send my seeds. There is restrictions in a few states and I've just sort of said Victoria because what I'd like people to do is if I can't send you seeds and you're in South Australia, maybe you'd like to start your own. Each state could maybe start their own, starting small and growing it. <laughs>